Okay, so next we will have uh, two hours in front of us and it will be uh, divided into sessions. So basically the first session will be moderated by me, that I am uh, Susanna Albertini, and uh, then the second part is the interactive session, so one full hour, and will be managed by Luis, that is also the one that uh, uh, created, uh, you will see, uh, uh, transform our idea in an interactive board. And then this uh, session will be moderated by Jakovos and Robert. Next. So what is the European Bioeconomy Network? The majority of you already, of course, uh, know because this is our annual uh, meeting, but it is a, is a proactive uh, alliance of now 70. Uh, you found that project that are dealing with bioeconomy promotion, communication, and uh, support. And what is the goal? Basically, is to maximize the effort uh, to come together to increase the knowledge sharing. That is what we are doing today. The networking, the mutual learning, but also uh, try to coordinate uh, joint activities and events. And uh, the European Commission recognized the importance of the European Bioeconomy Network. Indeed, we have been mentioned in the uh, European Bioeconomy Strategy, the update in, in 2018. And one of the, uh, I mean, the request that the Commission uh, did for the European Bioeconomy Network is exactly what we are doing today. So an annual um, reflection of all the projects to come together and try to define an action plan for the activities of the next month. And we are also, as European Bioeconomy Network, uh, uh, called as a referent player uh, for uh, bioeconomy promotion and communication. So as you can see, in several op occasions we have been called and we are also called um, to, to uh, present what are the, the, the results of this uh, initiative. Next. I, I go quickly in these uh, slides, you will, uh, you will have them. So these are our nice partners, and um, some of them are coming in the next days, so we will update it in the next days. And we are 70 projects. And uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, we, we try at least to have one meeting per year. In some years, like uh, uh, 2019, we had uh, two meetings. The first one was in, uh, in March uh, 2018 in Brussels, in, uh, hosted by the European uh, Commission, and the second one was in, uh, in uh, Helsinki in July 2019, and uh, the third uh, one in which the majority of you attended and also participated actively on stage was in the context of the BBIJU Stakeholder Forum in December last year. This year we are, of course, online. And uh, from next year, all the activities of transition to bio will, uh, of the European Bioeconomy Network will be under transition to bio. That is this new project that will start in January, coordinated by APRE. And Matteo will, uh, will present this project later on. Next. So 120 joint activities thanks uh, to the European Bioeconomy Network, but also uh, awareness raising, large-scale event, uh, involvement as speakers, uh, um, increase the impact of uh, the project outcomes. We are also open to new ideas, so come, come to us and tell us what do you want, what do you expect from the EU Bionet. Next. Today, today we are here, as, uh, as we mentioned, to discuss uh, um, how the bioeconomy communication and stakeholder engagement changed in times of COVID-19. And the objective, of course, are to facilitate the spread, the, the knowledge exchange of inspirational good practice that will inspire the, the discussion that will take place in the second hour. But of course, to stimulate a problem-oriented discussion. So what, what are the challenges and how those challenges have, have been addressed by, by the colleagues? And then, of course, uh, the main outcome is, is to improve the quality and impact of our communication and stakeholder engagement activities, but also education in the next month. And as an expected outcome, we, we would like to identify collaboration opportunities among the different projects and to define a common action plan uh, among the project. Again, I, I would like to stress that the European Bioeconomy Network was um, designed from the very beginning with you on the center, with the project on the center. So the idea is really to cooperate in order to increase the impact of what we, 
we do and to also uh, know from, from each other. This is the reason why uh, we call this event a mobilization and mutual learning workshop. And the format is that we will have uh, six selected uh, success story from the different project. Then we will have uh, uh, three new projects that will present uh, themselves and try to identify uh, possibility for cooperation. And then we will all together uh, be contributing to this interactive panel discussion that will su be supported by a collaboration tool that is called Miro. And finally, we will work all together in the definition of the 2021 action plan. And the conclusion, we wanted to offer you a wine, a cup of, a glass of wine, but unfortunately it's not yet possible, so next year we will do it. What are the, go to the next please, Luis. What are the open questions we would like to tackle today? So uh, basically we would like to understand how the global health emergency landscape changed the way the circular by economy is communicated. Uh, by economy is still a priority. We know from the fact that the Green Deal um, allocated 37% of the next generation EU, that is the recovery fund, to the Green Deal. But for the citizen, for the, for the, um, the other stakeholder, the research, the industry, is still a priority to the by economy. And then what are the challenges and opportunities for us as communicators in this new normality? What are the lessons learned and the success story from the late, last uh, basically eight months, more or less? What are the messages, the format, the channels, the contents that have demonstrated to be effective? And then how uh, the European Bioeconomy Network can contribute to increase the impact of the project in this, uh, in this period? Okay, so I think uh, I'm done. Uh, so I leave the floor to my colleagues with the inspirational case studies, and we will start uh, from Lyft. So Alexandra Almeida, the floor yes, is sir. yours. Hello, good morning. So I'm the first one, and it's like uh, back to the school times because I'm Alex Almeida. I was always the number one at school. So here today I'm also the first one to, to present. So I'm representing Lyft. Uh, it was uh, uh, a project from BBIJ finished in April um, this year, so in the in the peak of the first wave of pandemic in Europe. Uh, and um, the case here is that we had to to have a, a, a final event uh, in the project, and because of the COVID, we did, we had to transfer this physical event to to. To webinars. Next slide, please. So, and we involve more than 1,000 stakeholders. How? So, it, as I said, it was in the peak of, of, the, of, the, of the pandemic. So, we had to, to act fast and uh, did it with a with the partnership with other projects. Will be your future, so the bio, bio voices, and bio bridges, and also with the European Bioeconomy Network. Um, and as I said, we, we acted fast and we created these webinars with the, under the umbrella of shaping the innovation ecosystem for the bioeconomy. Um, and the, the stakeholders were the purple helix stakeholders, the target society, public authorities, in industry, and academia. And the objectives were, as a final event, to present the results of the project. We analyzed 64 supporting activities and we wanted to present the recommendations from, from, from those projects, and also at the same time to collect recommendations from the participants or inputs or feedback from, from the participants. Um, and since it was a, a, a big event, we, we also uh, added some more uh, objectives like uh, contribute to the networking because we had a lot of, of participants, and also we extended the, the events to the entire world that at the beginning was only for, for, for Europe. So what we did, we did um, four thematic workshops weekly uh, in awareness raising, policy framework from research to market and, and value chains. Uh, and for that, we used Zoom meetings, uh, Zoho meetings, Zoom and Mentimeter. I will explain why we changed it from Zoom meetings to Zoom. Can you change slide, please? So. In terms of, of 
problems or context to what we had. We had a contract, we had a grant agreement, and we, that we had a final event. But we didn't want to extend the project because it's, it was a, a short project of one year with a small budget, and we didn't have not neither the time or the money to, to extend it. So let's go for, for, for webinars. Um, and we started to create the concept, the ideas, small consortium. It was also easier because of that, only uh, four partners. Um, and we, 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 we decided to go with the, with the webinars. Um, and for that, firstly, we, 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 we used the Soho Meeting software that, as you all know, also on that time, March, April, these software companies were having some problems with the, the uh, boom of users, and we had some problems, so we had to change it to Zoom. That was not also not 100% uh, clear because some of the participants, they had this uh, beat on the Internet that Zoom was not uh, safe, and so we had some, some problems with, with participants that cannot attend it because it was Zoom. So now I think that things are, are different. Uh, in terms of, of what we think were the, the key elements of uh, success, as I said, the partnerships with other projects. Without the other projects and, and networks, it was not possible to have so many participants. Uh, also, we did a, um, a big invest or uh, some investment on, on social media campaigns, and also um, very important, the direct invitation. So. We invited directly people instead of sending mass mails to, to databases. We, we, we did direct invitations and also we made use of networks like, for instance, the, the European Bioeconomy uh, Network. Next One slide, minute, please. Alex. Yes, it's the last slide. So recommendations that we, we can uh, give from the, the experience that we have. Uh, some of them I already said. We need to react fast. Um, so. Don't think that, okay, let's wait one more month or two more months. Probably COVID will, will go out. No, we know from now from experience that he is here to stay for some, for some more months. Uh, the importance of partnerships, I, I highlighted this during the presentation. Uh, it's also important to use interactive tools, and as today we will use, because uh, I think it's, uh, it's good to keep the attention of the participants. Make them short. I think this is clear for everyone. If it's more than one hour, we will start to have people, I will not say disconnecting, but uh, technically, but they are not there <laughs> in the computer. Um, also, I think one thing that, uh, that um, works toward well for our, uh, for our webinars, it was to create this uh, concept of um, uh, several workshops, but all of them following the same uh, uh, setup, uh, all of them happening in the same day of the week at the same hour. And this gave us, all of them also somehow connected, and this gave us uh, a momentum to create uh, more, uh, um, more um, engagement. Attention, attention, yes, more attention. And yes. we can increase the participants from one webinar to, to another. So don't forget to record it because people that cannot that resisted, but they cannot participate for some reason, they will ask for, this, for that and always have available uh, a slot, uh, an option for questions and answers. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Alex. We go click, quickly to uh, Bio Voices. So, Michaela, five minutes for you. Hello, good morning. Uh, I will present the Bio Voices project case study, responsive social media strategy during COVID-19. Social media has been, uh, for BioVoices, a powerful tool to inform and reach consumers, as also to collaborate with the influencers, brand, and uh, bio-based industries. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. How we adapted our social media strategy during COVID-19. Uh, communication via social media has increased. COVID-19 has changed the way we use social media. Millions of people started to study and work from home which inevitably leads to more time spent on the social media channels. Um, the overall message of the project didn't change. BioVoice over social media aim is to inform, raise awareness, educate about bio-based products and, uh, and bioeconomy. 
taking into account the health emergency, we used uh, different communication strategies. And uh, it was important, uh, especially in the first weeks, to choose the right topic to share, taking care not to increase people's anxiety, but to try to convey messages that will promote sustainability. Uh, for this reason, we decided to experiment new formats uh, with both communication and contents. For example, launching the Bioeconomy at Home initiative with uh, a more intensive social media campaign to promote active engagement, open dialogue, interaction, and collaboration. The strategy was monitored weekly to be adapted to the evolution of trends in public perception and emotion. And next, and next slide, please. What we did was to increase social media activity, offering, in addition to the usual bio voices contents, also novelties such as the educational cards, uh, circular bioeconomy stories, and do it yourself tutorials. That's bringing the bioeconomy into the citizen home and reducing the isolation. For example, on Monday we had the circular bioeconomy stories, on Wednesday the online education, on Thursday the news, and so on. Mm. Thanks to, thanks to the European Bioeconomy Network facilitation, we increased the collaboration with similar project initiatives like uh, with Bloom, Globac, Enabling, and uh, with BBIJU, and, uh, but also with the SMEs, the researchers, and the influencers involved through the video interviews carried out. And next slide, please. Um, we found uh, during the lockdown a uh, much more responsive and engaged audience, so we tried to consolidate the relationship over social media using innovative, innovative engagement, such as uh, polls and surveys, asking for opinion and consensus from the public. We, we gained, uh, we doubled our followers during this period, thanks also to the engagement. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, the recommendation of the BioVoices project uh, are to experiment new formats, to make the social media activities more responsive to the societal trends, to join the forces by involving similar initiatives like we did with the project and uh, with the, the BIJU researchers, SMEs, uh, and uh, keep it real, so make it about people and build relationships over social media. So a uh, human-centered strategy, increase interest, engagement, and trust. Keep engaging, so keep two-way communication open, open with your followers, always responding. They, they want to have a feedback when they comment on post. Also, a like is okay. Uh, use a call for action to stimulate the interaction, like surveys and quizzes. They like it. Weekly monitoring and revision, and revision because uh, time, uh, the, the trends are changing all the time. And finally, use your channel to spread trust, hope, and positive mood in this difficult moment. And then, next slide. There is an error. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, remember to follow Bio Voices on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Michaela. So, next one uh, will be Bio Bridges. Beatriz? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, thank you very much, Susanna, and the European Economy Network for inviting me today to explain the activities that we are doing in the Biobridges project. So, next slide, please. So, I would like to start showing you a, a picture about our biomass, uh, biomass that can be used to produce value products. So, right now, we have a great potential uh, to, do, to use this biomass as raw material and turn to sustainable products which can decrease the pressure on our environment, create jobs, and boost the economy. As you can see in the picture of the right, there are a lot of uh, bio-based products that can be elaborated and we have an exhibition of some of them, like T-shirts from Neil Waves, bamboo toothbrush, cosmetics uh, from Fruit Waves. And we also created a video that we uh, that you show a little bit in the beginning uh, of the workshop called Biobase Day, that I recommend you to search and see YouTube uh, showing all these products. But they are still not in supermarkets, easy accessible and well known for the consumers. And that's the reason for Biobase Project. So next slide, please. 
So BioBridges project aims to facilitate, enhance, and support the collaboration among bio-based industry, brands, and consumers to improve the uptake and marketability of sustainability bio-based products. So within the project, we have three main target groups, brands, bio-based industry, and consumers. And I would like to show you two principal initiatives that we are carrying out with this target group. Reach to brand for bio-based industry and brands, and bio-heroes for consumers. So next slide, please. So what is Bridge to Brand? Bridge to, a Bridge to Brand is an initiative with an innovative format to connect brands willing to embrace a more sustainable approach in their business and bio-based industry and research players, providing groundbreaking solutions to the specific challenges identified by the brand. So first, we contacted with some brands. We asked about the challenges that they had and then we have the challenges identified. We start with a campaign to all of our networks to find entities which can provide solutions to these challenges. So we organize everything and gave to the appliers a specific recommendation of how to do the presentation. The results have been uh, that we have two success stories with Pia, Tampotan, and Gamble with around 45, 50 high quality solutions in each one with the participation of bio-based industry, SMEs, startups, research centers, and other bio-based solution providers from 18 to 22 countries. So next slide, please. And um, the second initiative is an initiative to consumers with the idea of creating a community with good communication skills and contacts to disseminate bioeconomy mainly in social networks. So we call bioheroes to this community because uh, we think they really are spending their time helping us to do more sustainable work uh, without any economic compensation. So we began with a social network campaign to engage people to be a biohero and showing the potential of a base product. So next slide, please. So when we had some bioheroes, we started uh, inviting them to our workshops, events first uh, regarding bioeconomy, now virtual because of the COVID, but it also has brought us an opportunity to reach more people, more countries, that otherwise it have been impossible. So also it happened uh, the same in which to brand initiative, having solution providers from USA, from Canada, from India. And in this moment, uh, we are doing interviews with our bioheroes, and they are explaining to us how is their sustainable life, why their bioeconomy is so important, what kind of bioproducts they are using, or in which project they are working. And, and finally, we, have, we did an extraction for consumers, a survey to collect opinions and needs of consumers. So next slide, please. So in big numbers, uh, the, the impact of our project is a 100,000 visualization in social network campaigns of bioheroes. We have 26 bioheroes plus probably three more that show interest to be a biohero. We collaborated to create four new cross-sectoral interconnections, two from Bridge to Brand Initiative. Uh, we have more than 1,000 surveys completed with needs and opinions of consumers. We did 20 cooperation workshops, and we have the exhibition of bio-based products in different countries. And next slide, please, the last one. So at last, uh, some recommendations. Uh, use all the tools, social networks, YouTube, contacts, that you have to disseminate and engage people. Have a good slogan to go for action and, and engage. Use multipliers to spread your message and commit them with the project. Have practical examples uh, to explain the message, products that you can see, you can touch, smell. For example, we have a poor elephant paper that has a lot of success and everybody tries to smell it. And the last one, use similar uh, success cases. Um, that's all for my part. Thanks a lot, Bea. Very interesting. Okay, so now we go to the Bloom project. So, Norbert. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, quick question in times of COVID, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so we already heard it a couple of times this uh, during this meeting. So what, what happened uh, in Bloom? Um, maybe next slide, please. Will you give me the next slide, please? Uh, I okay. see next slide. Okay. Sorry? Okay. Uh, I see it. So, yeah, okay. 
So um, definitely Bloom, Bloom is a project uh, with five regional hubs um, to foster public engagement um, in the bioeconomy. Um, so this is from the objectives, to create a space of exchange and debate and raise awareness and ha enhance the knowledge on bioeconomy. Uh, through co-creation activities with multi-stakeholder groups, uh, we developed uh, specifically tailored outreach activities in the in the different hubs. Uh, hubs were in, in Spain, in Poland, um, in, in the Netherlands, and uh, Sweden, Finland, and Germany, Austria. So Sweden, Finland, Germany, Austria, they were um, twinning partners in this. Uh, Bloom is in the last months of its activity. Uh, it was planned as a three years project, now it became a three years, four months project, and COVID hit us definitely at the peak of our outreach activities. So all the co-creation process already happened uh, during the uh, period when we were still able to meet face-to-face -face with uh, local stakeholder groups. So before any lockdown happened, and I, I think this, um, also was one one of the aspects to for, for the success of our activities because people were already committed they created together but anyway the developed activities foreseen to be um, in an to be held in a non virtual environment on a on a specific place uh, they had to be adopted to the new situation to the new covid situation uh, so the hubs and the partners in the hubs had to be extremely flexible uh, and creative to change the formats of these activities. Next slide, please. So, what what problems did we did we encounter, um, how, and how did we react to it? So, in in fact, everything was planned, everything was in line, and suddenly we identified we needed uh, definitely more time for preparation to be uh, to get familiar with the new tools, uh, especially when we um, found out that there were missing technical skills, both uh, within the own staff, but also uh, with uh, the audience when we started using online tools. So the working in teams through this became more complicated. Um, and wh what you always happen, and probably if you could look into the places here, there are always people uh, who are less concentrated because they have phone calls, phone calls to do, they're doing their emails. During, during the different activities. I think this is a bit different from face-to-face -face meetings. Um, during permanently changing situations and, and uh, regulations in, uh, in the COVID situation, the, the reaction time had to be very short. Uh, so much more flexibility was expected from the partners to change anything planned already um, to a new situation and to get the audience um, acquainted and um, invited. But we also had uh, events that we cancelled. Um, not all of them um, could be postponed, so uh, we, we missed a bit of um, the success or the results of what we have uh, prepared before. Um, one negative aspect, the role of social media. We heard an interesting uh, presentation right before, but the dialogue uh, on social media became difficult, and we tried it in, on, the, on the website of, on Bloom to have a dialogue zone on the website, which yeah, we definitely could say it failed. It was not used by the audience we had in our online events. Another aspect which definitely was a problem is that many online events now happen from many projects, so there was a competition on time um, and, and attention of the audience. So we, today, the last weeks, what, whatever, we are hopping from one online event to the next one, and especially when you're in, involved in, in more than just one project and more than one activity, you, you would definitely have time constraints here. And of course, what, what we definitely missed, and, and this is, I think, the most uh, negative aspect of, um, of a lockdown, lockdown, less personal interaction with partners, with colleagues, and with the general public, which um, yeah, is, 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 it's difficult to build a commitment only from online interaction. But maybe there will be a learning the future on this. Next slide, please. So um, 
Norbert, uh, one minute more. One, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm almost through. We, we changed the engagement month format uh, where possible, so we went to outdoor instead of indoor. We made hybrid, and um, to follow the hygiene concepts, we had live streaming. Um, we had training to use, how to use the online tools, and we had a longer period for outreach activities. And just one thing, uh, what we learned throughout the different throughout the months this year, we definitely had a learning within the audience, within the teams, uh, to work with these online tools. And it can be compared to the first time when people took part in the co-creation events. Uh, so there was a learning as well. So last slide, please. Success stories, um, what we definitely had, we reached out to more people and to more people um, in far a distance of, of, our, of our hubs uh, in rural areas. Uh, in different situations, we had the, 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 um, the success that high-level experts decided to join our events because they did not want to travel long distance and have the risk of corona. And uh, definitely what I said before, there's a learning how to use the new tools uh, among the audience uh, during the months um, uh, of, of our activities. So what can be recommended? Organize shorter events, but more often for so full day events, definitely make people drop out. Um, change the styles, try different subjects, use different channels to connect, use different techniques and tools but uh, consider the time it needs to make uh, yourself familiar with these tools. Same for the next point, be open for new tools beyond Zoom. Uh, there are probably tools which fit, fit much better to support engagement and outreach. Uh, these tools like GoToMeeting or Zoom are quite restric restricted when it comes to individual interaction. And most of all, accept that things will go wrong. Thank you, that was my presentation. <laughs> Thanks, very, very interesting, and indeed uh, the acceptance, or at least a, a question that emerges, the fact that we are all becoming more flexible in uh, when, when it comes to, to problems, because we know that problems are uh, every day, everywhere, and therefore we are more relaxed and, and flexible. So next block of uh, presentation, next four presentation, will be uh, with the project, so the, as you have seen, the first projects were basically on communication, education, and awareness. And those uh, four projects are more in stakeholder engagement, and particularly at uh, the regional uh, level. Therefore, the first uh, project is uh, by Yoistap, and so Magda, the floor is yours. Good morning, all. Thank you very much, Susanna. Uh, I would like to tell you a little bit more about my Yoistap project which we coordinate here in Poland in the Institute of Soil Science and Plant Cultivation. And uh, I would like to tell you how COVID taught us to be more efficient in engaging uh, the stakeholders. Next slide, please. Uh, our uh, project is to support Bio East uh, initiative and its, uh, in, and its action plan for transition of, of 11 Bio East European countries towards uh, bioeconomy. Uh, the BioEast initiative started a couple of years ago and uh, it's working in 11 countries, uh, mostly of the Visegrad group. And uh, we have uh, different stakeholders, next slide please, uh, different levels of uh, working. We work at a national level very close to the ministries and ad hoc uh, groups. Uh, we uh, communicate a lot with national stakeholders, uh, with uh, agroecology, forestry, uh, food systems. We are organizing a lot of workshops for them. Um, uh, also, we work at the project level where we uh, encourage Bio East Board and NCP national contact points. Uh, of each country to work with us, uh, to cooperate in certain uh, work package. And then we also work at uh, macro-regional level uh, with uh, advisory country, bio secretariat, thematic working groups, which are uh, developed uh, in, and work for uh, bio initiative. Next slide, please. Uh, so 
as I mentioned, stakeholders mostly is uh, policy makers, academia and business. Academia is quite simple and uh, very happy to cooperate with us. Policy makers and business are much more difficult. Uh, while preparing project, we thought about it. Next, uh, next please. And uh, already then, we had communication expert teams uh, set up, which will communicate uh, importance, opportunity of uh, bioeconomy uh, to stakeholders, to work very closely with them, to make contact. We knew that many of our stakeholders will be policymakers, which are very busy people, uh, who um, does not have too much time to prepare, to fill the surveys, to talk to us. Um, so uh, we, uh, before the project, we, we set up those uh, communication expert teams. Uh, next, please. And uh, as I said, our original plan, and then we started the project uh, in October last year, in March. We had a second uh, project meeting and the COVID started. So very quickly we had to adapt uh, to a project meeting with 50 people from 11 countries uh, with not knowing online tools. Uh, but to be honest, the project went very uh, well and successful. Uh, we talked there and at the time, we thought that it's probably for two, three months. After summer, we will be, be able to travel again. But what happened to our original plans, which were workshop, role-play game, peer-to-peer -peer learning, or uh, conferences, it was impossible to do. So the changes were into the webinars. But then we were thinking um, the surveys. If you send just a survey to a stakeholder, especially in ministry, uh, they will not do it. They will ignore the email. Um, they will probably maybe we're gonna get one response, which is not uh, good enough for them. Magda, so, one minute more, excuse me. Okay. And so what we did, we very quickly uh, did prepare webinars, and we talk to the stakeholders directly during the whole process. Next slide, please. Uh, when we expect projects, we do the analysis of our stakeholders. Uh, we make sure that they can work with Zoom or they cannot work with the Skype. We record meeting, we have very close contact, we uh, save all the presentation and we give it afterwards to our stakeholders. Next one. So that's the uh, tools that we mostly use, Mentimeter and Slido. There are ones that are very interactive and they engage stakeholders in the work. Next one. Uh, so recommendations encourage, work together, and show your consideration. Show to people that you really know what you talk about, that they are important for you, that they can help, they can change the country, and they can work and support you. Next one, last one. Uh, so we have prepared also deliverable, how to, uh, our plan was with the deliverable of stakeholder engagement. Now it is being adapted all the time. It's a working document which we change uh, regularly. Uh, we're learning new things, we're adding them, we advise our uh, colleagues in each country how to work in and deal with uh, the situation. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and now we will have uh, two projects that are sister projects, uh, Be Rural Empower, uh, Empower for Bio. So we start with uh, uh, Be Rural and we will have uh, Alexander. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, presentation today as a representative of Bureau Project uh, in the name of all my colleagues involved in the project. And uh, I want to, to give regards to European uh, uh, Bioeconomy Network for organizing this event. It's a good opportunity to exchange experiences, uh, how to deal with all those challenges that we're facing in this pandemic time. Uh, first slide, please. Uh, the Open Innovation Platform team, our team uh, in uh, North Macedonia, is a part of the Project, uh, led by Zdeves uh, 
has been actively involved in uh, addressing all those challenges that we're facing in this uh, time. The first one is uh, the famous word lockdowns. I, I read uh, some article this morning that this is the most popular word in 2020. Uh, the next challenge is limited uh, social gathering opportunities. Uh, Next is meeting requirements that the project, we don't want to stop the project and we want to continue with uh, working with uh, our uh, the goals. And that, uh, at last is uh, limited technical knowledge of local stakeholders. So as a solution, uh, we decide that this is uh, definitely must go digital. And uh, for, the, for this reason, we must uh, build capacities of uh, local stakeholders, how to use the, the modern technology. and. Uh, Definitely, as a first priority, is keeping health of uh, all our stakeholders. Next, please. Uh, let me just brief uh, introduce uh, our project. Uh, our project is actually bio-based strategy, strategies and roadmaps for enhanced rural and regional development in the United in the EU. Or the name is Rural, and the local partner is in North Macedonia is Zdeves. International Center for Sustainable Development of Energy, Water, and Environment Systems. The project is consisting of uh, five OIPs, actually, from five different countries uh, in Europe. That means Latvia, Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria as European member states, and uh, North Macedonia as a candidate can country for joining the European Union. And uh, in, the, in the framework of one region, this is actually Strumica region, Rural region Strumica. It consists of four municipalities in southeast part of our country. It's the largest producer and exporter of agricultural products in North Macedonia. So uh, there is a, a, a solid uh, material base for bioeconomy. Next slide. For for uh, promoting the the new way of working, this so-called new normality. As uh, Davis, we make as Davis, we make strategy for capacity buildings. The first uh, goal is definitely developing stakeholder working groups, and we already set, set up the, the, this uh, stakeholder working group, and we start working in normal conditions. Uh, but now uh, we, we transfer to monitoring stakeholder capacities for the online working and uh, capacity building for, for this remote working. Next slide. One minute more. Yes. Uh, as a recommendation, uh, in this process, we make surveying the human and technical capacities in the region at first, test availability of online communication platforms, uh, preparing manuals for how to, to use the electronic communication, and organizing the, the real meetings. Uh, we have uh, until now organized uh, working group meetings and for knowledge and capacity building webinars. Uh, and uh, assistance on uh, any technical or uh, any different pro problems. Next, please. And as a success story, I have to point that uh, the, as a, as a co uh, capacity building for the implementation trans transposition of EU legislation is very important. Continuous stakeholder engagement in all those uh, events. Uh, I also told you that we organized three working group meetings and for knowledge and capacity building webinars. Uh, we produce uh, educational material for dissemination and the later on using of the taking knowledge. And all those online meetings as a place for fruitful discussions on the bioenergy future of uh, regional Strumica. So in this manner, we expect that we're keeping stakeholders up to date and continue because this is the three years project and we want to finish it. That's all for me, 15 seconds more. Thank you. Thank and you. Thanks a lot, Alexander. It was very useful to understand uh, even uh, how to deal with uh, a small uh, region and, to, and this capacity building is an important element. So Power for Bio, uh, Christine, she wrote me that she has some problem. I hope you are back with no problems, technical problems. Yes, so hello, uh, my name is Christine Boish and I'm um, the work package leader in Power for Bio and I work at EPC Project Corporation uh, in Berlin. And uh, yeah, well, I want to start with my very last sentence of this presentation, and it is expect the unexpected. So when I, um, uh, as soon as I participated in that call, my router broke. <laughs> so I'm basically with my uh, mobile phone um, online now, and I hope that I can stay until the end of the talk. And yeah, so next slide, please. 
Yeah, uh, within um, Power for Bio, uh, as uh, Susanna already mentioned, we have a sister project of uh, Be Rural. Uh, we are working in um, 10 regions, five Western European regions and five Central and Eastern European regions. And um, the idea is to have a knowledge ex exchange between these regions so that all regions can learn from each other. And uh, yeah, our ta target stakeholders are the regional stakeholders from state authorities, bioeconomy market actors, and other uh, bioeconomy stakeholders. And uh, the expected outcome is to revise the existing um, bio uh, bioeconomy um, strategies and to create new ones for the regions that don't have one yet. And so uh, I want to introduce two formats that we are using, and these are cross visits and training. Next slide, please. And yeah, on the left hand side, you can see our uh, cross visit in January in Bavaria, where we all met. Now you know it's not possible anymore. So uh, we uh, fast decided to change our program of the cross visits um, online. And uh, yeah, problems that we encountered are uh, we cannot do field visits in us anymore to show best practice examples. This is impossible now. And uh, yet, yeah, we also found it hard to attract participants due to the competition of interesting uh, events that uh, or other colleagues encountered also. And the interaction between participants is lacking. And apart from that, some stakeholders are kind of ghosting. And uh, yeah, this is due to other things, and especially uh, business uh, people are more uh, having trouble with keeping their businesses. And so, um, yeah, it's hard to see them sometimes. Next slide, please. Yeah, and um, yeah, next slide, you see the trainings. So they were supposed to be uh, physical. And uh, yeah, so we also had to change them to online. And as uh, other colleagues mentioned, you cannot do a, a one day thing. So uh, yeah, we were inspired actually by the LIST webinar series, and we decided to make our uh, trainings, um, change them to webinar series. And so we had uh, in June and July webinar series in Biochemical uh, with five webinars. And uh, right now, actually right now at the moment, um, there are uh, the last two webinars of the series is part of eight webinars for about student teams. And so solutions we adopted to the problem regarding the best practice examples. Uh, in some of our visits, we showed videos um, instead of going to um, the company, etc. And yeah, then um, uh, as other colleagues mentioned before, making events short and with clear focus. And yeah, we're trying to engage participants by the use of some of my multimeter. And uh, regarding um, the the stakeholders contact that is uh, very crucial for the regional partners within Powerful Bio. Um, yeah, they uh, it, they all told me um, it worked. They are still in good contact with the stakeholders, but you need to be patient and things. And uh, yeah, maybe call them by phone or directly uh, contact them by email. Next slide, please. Yeah, and our recommendations and our key elements of success is yeah, called prepare events very well. And uh, yeah, offer interesting content that is of value for the participants. And yeah, in one or better more test runs, um, presenters should become familiar with the two experience. And yeah, disseminate the uh, events as well. And yeah, directly contact your important stakeholders in person and invite them. Of course, we shared uh, all our um, uh, events on our social media channels and did uh, some cross. Uh, dissemination with other colleagues and other related initiatives. And uh, yeah, so we uh, could create quite a good reach. And compared to the um, uh, the physical cross visits, we had 12 before. In total, we were having 10. Um, we had around 30 to 60 participants in the physical meeting. And in the offline uh, cross visits, we had up to 100 stakeholders participating. So uh, of course, as other colleagues mentioned, it is um, way easier for people to participate. You don't have to travel. And so also people that are not uh, really close by are able to join. So this is a, a very, very great advantage that we're having. And with our training webinars, uh, we have around 40 and 50 participants for each webinar. And yeah, as I mentioned, <laughs> before it happened to me, it never happened before. Expect the unexpected and be prepared. 
so I wasn't really prepared that my routers not working anymore. Never, never stopped working before, but yeah, so uh, fortunately there are mobiles and we can access the internet. And yeah, so thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. A lot of uh, interesting uh, points to, to be discussed later on uh, in our interactive session. So next uh, speaker is, uh, is Anna from uh, Alt Bioeco Project. So Anna, go ahead. The floor is yours. Five minutes as usual. Thank you very much. So my name is Anna. I'm uh, talking today about uh, um, engaging local stakeholders in online workshops, especially focusing on one method, a creative online approach um, that is called the Serious Play. I'm working for the Alpio Echo project for the city of Hietmaringen, who is the lead partner in the project. Next slide, please. Thank you. So let me briefly introduce to you the project first. So in our Alpio Echo project, we are working on the valorization of innovative bioeconomical potentials along bio-based food and botanical extract value chains in the alpine space. To make it a bit more um, precise, we're working on the value chains of apples, walnuts, herbs, and alpine hay. And we've been analyzing the value chains for bioeconomic potential. So for instance, for new possibilities um, to use apple pommes or walnut press cake or alpine hay. And then based on these results that we got there, we have developed new products and business model concepts for these potentials used, for instance, by enterprises, but SMEs as well. Our business models and our entire project basically aims to strengthen the regional value chains and the regional value creation. And yeah, then uh, it runs still until April 2021. 20, um, Next slide, please. So I've been already talking about the eco-innovative business models that we have been working on and that we have developed in our project. We have tested these business models together with regional partners and regional businesses, but yet they are not really implemented in the different regions. So to foster the implementation, we have set up 10 regional advisory boards consisting of six to 12 persons each. And there we have political decision makers, but also representatives from civil society organizations, public administration, and further experts that bring together relevant knowledge for the business model for one specific region. And um, we wanted to meet with these regional advisory boards, of course, in person and work with them together in person, but due to corona, that wasn't possible. Um, next slide, please. So we had planned two meetings with them. First, an online, uh, a normal meeting that could be simply transferred into a normal video conference to get everyone on the same page. But then we had our second workshop um, that was planned as a physical, legal, serious play workshop, so really a creative workshop with everyone at the same table, building together with legal bricks to define the status quo of the business model in the specific region, to jointly develop a roadmap and a joint vision for the implementation. And all of these results then should result in regional guidelines for the business models in one region. And so we had to, due to Corona, we had to rearrange and replan how to do this creative design thinking workshop in these small group of six to 12 people. Um, next slide, please. So let me briefly first um, explain to you the Lego Series Play Workshop concept. I don't know if many of you know it. It really is that you get Legos and then you use the Lego bricks as metaphoric elements to visualize your ideas and to communicate. And um, how it worked for us, the participants got questions and then you should answer them within a limited time frame with your individual Lego constructions. And, um, of course, this is a really nice thing if you have this possibility to do this physical in one place, but we, we weren't. But I will talk about this in a second. So what was our goal with this workshop? We wanted to have the experts communicate their own understanding of our business models to define the core elements and also to jointly develop a roadmap how to bring the implementation further and to develop a joint vision. And um, how it worked then for us was basically that Instead of meeting everyone together, some workshops could still take place physically, but some of them had to be either be replaced by hybrid workshops. So we had some workshops where the participants, half of them were in one room building together, and then the other half was back home in front of their laptops. And we had everyone having their own little sets of Lego bricks. And then you basically were still answering questions, building your little models, and then showing them into the camera. 
And that sounds a bit weird in the beginning, but it actually worked quite well for us. Um, but I think you have to be, to be very um, prepared to do this. And next slide, please. Um, exactly. So um, before you look at the text on the left side, please have a look at the picture on the right side. This already shows a, little, a lot of um, small legal constructions that we built. What I have to say, and I forgot this in the beginning, unfortunately, is that this is a facilitated workshop. So you have a trainer who is um, preparing the workshop together with you, you're defining the aim that you want to get, and then you prepare with him the, how it works. And usually it works like that. Everyone builds their own ideas, and in the end you assemble everything together. And how we did it in our case is not bringing everything together on one table, but we had the facilitator working remotely who was rebuilding our ideas on his own table and then bringing everything together, as you can see it on the right side. Um, that in brief, I could talk about this for, for a long time. Um, let me briefly tell you about the product problems that we had. Of course, the technicalities, because if you have six people sitting in different locations and then everyone needs the Lego and then you need to make sure that they, if they show it in the camera that you can see it very well, but also in addition, um, you need to make sure that the joint building experience, which is really at the core of this approach, doesn't get lost in the process. Um, again, for us, this, uh, I was very surprised that it worked very well. I think also because in the beginning of the workshop, we had a small session where the participants got used to working with the Lego bricks, and then you also understand that there's a difference in adults working or building things with Lego bricks, using them as metaphoric elements and just um, childish Lego brick construction. Um, of course, it wasn't the same experience as if everyone would have been in the same room, but I think at that point I can recommend using this technique also either as a complete online workshop or as a joint hybrid workshop. So, so either everyone at their own desk back home building their Lego bricks or um, even this hybrid workshop format that we did. Some key elements, I think, of um, the success was that the participants, of course, they need to be open to play with legal in a serious um, setting. Um, of course, a good preparation of the technicalities. So for this picture on the right side that you can see, that was the table of our facilitator, and then you have a camera on the right side and a camera on the left side, and you need to make sure that you see everything very well. Anna, please uh, uh, try to conclude because we are late. I will. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you need um, well-prepared participants up front and a good planning and communication with the LEGO Series Play trainer. And next slide, please. So okay. thanks, thanks a lot. I, I removed all the, the, the final slide. I will uh, upload okay. the, the final slide is simply the, 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 the contacts. I will put them again back in the, in the final uh, um, version that I will send to everybody. Uh, okay, so now we are going in the last uh, block of uh, presentation that is about the three projects that are just started or they are about, at the, about to start, like uh, Transition to Bio. Very, very quickly, some highlights just to help uh, everybody to be familiar with uh, those projects. So the first one is uh, All Things Bio Pro and uh, Anne is the coordinator. Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Susanna. Um, so, hi from my side to everyone. Um, I will just shortly introduce you to the All Things Bio Pro project. Um, it's a game changer for the bio-based economy. Um, in this project, we want to get citizens involved um, in the future bio economy, and we will use serious gaming um, to channel their voices and um, yeah, to bio -based, to the bio-based industry and to stakeholders in the bio-based industry. And um, we will develop this um, serious game um, with a co-creation process um, involving citizens and experts um, at the same time. Next slide, please. So um, we just uh, started the project in September this year, and uh, one of our objectives um, is to hold awareness and participation events. 
So we will organize focus groups and workshops with citizens and experts um, to together co-create um, this uh, planned serious game. And now with this new COVID-19 situation, we think we have to switch to online events. Um, and yeah, this will be um, a challenge um, to find good interactive tools um, to have a good creative process anyway. Um, so this will be definitely um, a challenge that we have to tackle. Um, we, of course, have to engage um, with our stakeholders, um, and we plan to use emailing and um, the All Things Bio platform um, to a greater extent to reach out to stakeholders. Um, and the uh, gaming and the um, mobile app that we are going to develop are working remotely anyway, so um, this is a good point um, in the project that um, no, so people can can um, use the game, play the game um, wherever they are in their home uh, safely. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, we are looking um, for collaborations within the European Bioeconomy Network. Um, of course, in the first place, um, for um, the development of our game missions. Um, so we would like to exchange. Um, the knowledge and latest results with other projects, um, mainly um, on the topics we want to build our game missions on, um, which are food packaging, fashion and textiles, um, sustainability um, for kids and in the school environment, and also um, green jobs and careers. So that was um, from my side. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Anne. So uh, there are several projects in, in that will uh, be happy to com collaborate with you, and we will also come back to you with some ideas. And um, okay, so uh, basically, next uh, uh, project now is uh, BioSwitch. So Anna, the floor Hi. is yours. Thank you very much, Susanna. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, well, just a short, uh, very brief uh, information on what is BioSwitch. Uh, BioSwitch is a project that aims to boost the European bio-based economy by encouraging and supporting brand owners to switch from fossil-based uh, to bio-based approaches. And uh, in order to do this, uh, we are following two main uh, pillars. One of them is that we have a framework where we are placing brand owners at the center of a set of events and communication actions. So this is quite relevant uh, for this webinar where we are tackling uh, communication and engagement of stakeholders in COVID uh, times. And then we are developing the BioSwitch toolbox, uh, which uh, we hope it supports them through this transition. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, Susanna, please. So one of the main objectives, as uh, we already uh, said, is the stakeholder engagement. Uh, we are aiming to develop a network of brand owners and uh, in this network uh, to work with them and identify uh, some best practices, what are their needs, their perceived risks, their motivations in switching to bio-based so that we can uh, accompany them and help them uh, through this transition. And uh, this, uh, uh, from the very beginning of the project, because it started in June 2020, uh, we have to rethink and uh, take a new approach to all this. Uh, for example, we already had uh, carried out uh, the supposedly face-to-face -face interviews, which we had to transform into teleconferences. Uh, one of the good things is that we uh, managed to, to get a wider reach. Uh, the problem is, of course, you lose uh, some of these face-to-face. Uh, -face, um, uh, uh, there are some more. There is more language when it's face-to-face. Yes. Uh, we also have to leverage uh, flagship brand owners uh, in order to attract others and participate. And we have to engage entities. Uh, we focused on entities that already had some business activities that were closely aligned. Uh, so we made a more uh, focused approach in a way. Uh, one of the other objectives uh, that we have is to validate uh, the BioSwitch toolbox. This was planned uh, in a format of physical workshops which we are now working on reshaping because obviously they will have to take place uh, online. Um, and this way we need to work further on the incentives to engage uh, these brand owners and participate, uh, do the testings and so on. Uh, and then for the rollout, uh, 
the same thing uh, instead of uh, physical workshops uh, or train the trainers, uh, we will have to probably, or at least we are already thinking, what if we have to do them online? Uh, we are having a global mind, but we are following a local approach, and uh, we have realized that the use of regional languages may be uh, a good point in uh, managing and attracting stakeholders and brand owners uh, in this case. And then last but not least, uh, regarding dissemination and exploitation overall of the project, uh, we are following a um, really intensive uh, 360 communications campaign. So basically, we are boosting everything online. We are doing more efforts than ever. Uh, we are, uh, people already mentioned before that uh, the contact, uh, personal contact is really important. We are trying to do that as well to, uh, as much as we can, do personalized emails instead of massive mailing. Uh, we leverage also our direct contacts and ask for uh, multipliers uh, that can help us reach out more uh, stakeholders and brand owners. And uh, yeah, that's overall, like in this short time, uh, it. So we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, and how uh, we see our collaboration with the other European Bioeconomy Network projects. Uh, well, we were talking about maxifiers, and this is a great example of how collaborating uh, with other projects can help us uh, do joint actions. Uh, look for synergies and help each other uh, to raise awareness among a, biggest, a bigger number of stakeholders. Of course, they could also help us with some of the testing and validation of the tools that we are developing. And then, uh, again, to disseminate and share the generated knowledge so that potential replications uh, may be generated and also uh, in the case that the work we are performing is of use to other projects. Thank you, Susana. Great, that's, uh, that's it from my, from my side. Thanks a lot, Anna. So, as you know, there is a lot of uh, work in conjunction with the BioBridges and the presentation that Bea did, and particularly the, the bridge to brand concept. Indeed. So, now I give the floor to uh, Matteo from APRE, and he will present the transition to bio that will start in January. Good morning to everybody. Thanks, uh, Susanna. Yes, transition to bio uh, will start in January, and uh, it uh, uh, it will uh, be a, f a fundamental, a key player in the European Bioeconomy Network. Uh, so it was uh, uh, funded during the last uh, uh, Horizon 2020 call, and uh, it um, I mean it will also have a sort of legacy of. Uh, uh, BioVoices project that is coordinated uh, by APRE. Uh, so in the next slide, I change the, um, a little bit the, um, the, 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 the slides because uh, since the project is not started yet, uh, uh, we would like to talk about the possible collaboration that uh, uh, we foresee uh, for the 2021 20, and 2022. So it's a two-year project, and um, we will have a lot of activities in terms of uh, raising awareness on bioeconomy, on communication, but also on education, on the definition of the skills, and also in supporting regions uh, in the development of uh, the uh, campaign uh, in awareness and communication. So in the first uh, stage, in the first months of the project, we will collect uh, the best practices in the field of bioeconomy. We will collect uh, uh, what are the tools, that the existing databases uh, in the topics of awareness, communication, education. Then we will have uh, a, um, a focus group in order to validate this uh, research and to validate the library that we will uh, produce. Then we will have uh, uh, several events uh, um, that are uh, targeted to the large public, uh, and uh, we aim not to, <laughs> we hope that we will uh, uh, do them uh, on site because we would like to show to the people what the bioeconomy is, we would like to show the, the products, uh, and uh, we would like to um, make them. Uh, 
uh, confident, I mean, just to try what are the uh, products, uh, uh, the bio-based products, uh, as already we did uh, in uh, BioVoices, uh, uh, thanks to the uh, Susanna's uh, um, uh, suitcase and all the products collected in these years. Um, then, okay, we will have also uh, some events uh, in order to um, define what are the skills uh, uh, needed uh, in the education in order to um, in order to uh, create new jobs position in bioeconomy. So we um, we call them skillatons. So there will be new uh, new concept, a new way to to do hackathons, uh, but to define the skills in the bioeconomy. So uh, as uh, Susanna said said during the um, during the presentation during the beginning of this event, uh, this project will uh, contribute, will animate the EU Bionet, the European Bioeconomy Network. So every year we will organize. Uh, uh, a mutual uh, mobilization, mutual learning workshop uh, for this uh, uh, for the bioeconomy network. So, in the last slide, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 we since we um, we didn't uh, we didn't do the kickoff meeting, uh, so uh, we would like to discuss there the measures to to face uh, uh, possible and future. COVID-19 limitation. I mean, in my, in our opinion, and it's, it's uh, uh, I mean, uh, a shared uh, thought that we will not be able to uh, to travel during the first months of the project. So we will uh, switch everything online, and in particular, we will uh, switch uh, to online. Uh, the uh, focus group, the validation workshop, and of course uh, we would like to uh, invite some of you uh, to be part of this workshop in order to help us to validate the uh, tools uh, and the um, and the resources collected during the first months. And then the prob problem will be uh, probably for the large scale event because since I was saying in these uh, events uh, we would like to involve the people uh, on um, directly the people we would like to show them this product and uh, in this case uh, we need to change the approach uh, if the restriction will remain also for the second half of the 2021. So this is something uh, we will discuss uh, in the kickoff meeting and in the next uh, month because uh, I mean it's something that you have to assess month per month and let's see how to uh, handle this in case we will have those restrictions also in 2021. So, Thanks, Matteo. Thank Thanks a lot. Uh, we need to go quickly to the interactive session because we are late. For those who are asking what the hell is my suitcase, it's a big luggage with more than 300 different types of uh, bio-based products, so it's not my luggage with my underwear. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the interactive session. So, Luis, uh, if you can uh, share it to share the link to everybody. So. Uh, we will have uh, here in the chat um, a link to the Miro board, so please follow this link and you will be uh, able to interact with us using uh, post-its that you will uh, find uh, in, in the system. Um, the two uh, moderators will be Jakovos and Robert and Luis uh, will be uh, the manager of this uh, interactive session. We really would like everybody to contribute. We need probably to shorten a little bit what we, we planned. Oh, I see that uh, a lot of people are already there. That's great. Okay, Jakovos, the floor is yours. You need to unmute yourself, Jakovos. Okay. Welcome. Sorry for this. Yeah, uh, just, uh, I would just to, I would just like to give uh, some hints uh, about the technicalities of the, of the, how to use this uh, post-it. So in each board, you will see that you have some post-it here on the top. Uh, on the first one is you know, green and 
and pink. Uh, you have to double click on it to write inside and you, you know, can just uh, take them and put them in the right uh, area. Um, I will start with the timer because we have uh, 10 minutes for the first board. And now, Jakovos, you can go on, and I will start with the timing when you uh, start. Louis, give me one minute just yeah. uh, as an introduction, and then you can start. Uh, what I was saying before is that uh, it's now time for you to not just to listen, but to contribute your ideas. Uh, as uh, overall, uh, the, the idea behind Miro, uh, we tried in uh, the first uh, portion on the left, uh, to extract the key messages from all presentations. Uh, you will get, of course, all presentations, but uh, this is a snapshot of what was presented. Uh, the second comment is that uh, the entire board uh, will be available uh, even after the, the webinar, uh, the workshop, uh, and uh, we aim to close it uh, next Wednesday, in one week from now, allowing you to revisit uh, to see what is there, but also uh, contribute your new ideas. Uh, and uh, everything, uh, the final one, will be shared with everyone uh, next Wednesday. Uh, coming to the first question, uh, we heard several approaches, new approaches or responses uh, from our projects uh, to the new situation. Uh, but uh, from my understanding, and you also face them, uh, you, there are new challenges, things that uh, were not before, uh, but we have to deal with them now, new problems that emerged, but also new opportunities. Uh, we try to have some examples, but uh, please feel free to uh, put your own examples. So, from your uh, experience or uh, practice, what uh, are the new opportunities that emerge in this strange situation that we are going through. Uh, also, the, the challenges. Uh, for example, from uh, the presentations before, uh, there is a, I understand that the, there is a problem or a challenge of uh, being familiar with online tools, which was not the case before. Uh, but at the same time, uh, for example, from uh, Lyft, I remember that uh, the uh, impact was much, much higher. So this is a new opportunity, a new um, way to, to reach out to more additional audience and much more audience. So yeah, for I, was, the one that I, was, maybe, I would maybe uh, just uh, compliment that uh, I, still, I still see that there are some uh, people working on the uh, first panel. Uh, now actually the, the center of attention is the, the, the second column, so the opportunities and challenges. Uh, maybe, uh, Luis, if you could uh, also zoom when sharing your screen. Um, yeah, exactly, a little bit to put it in the center. There you go. Because uh, I think 50% of uh, participants are um, all still playing with uh, the first column. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, just one thing that I want to say is that, uh, of course, you can zoom uh, in, inside uh, using your uh, mouse wheel if you are on a computer, or there is a... Uh, uh, there is this one here that is on the on the bottom right uh, corner. There is the possibility to uh, to use to zoom in and zoom out uh, if you are on a laptop or uh, on a mobile. Uh, well, from uh, the current responses, uh, I see some very good points. Uh, you can access as good thing an opportunity. Uh, more people, especially in rural areas, which is not easy, I suppose, for them to uh, travel uh, to the uh, capital or even Brussels, the usual suspect, uh, for an event. Uh, cheaper events, indeed, uh, whatever the additional effort uh, that we need to, to put to make it online is certainly much cheaper than uh, traveling for especially we have uh, 20, 30, 50 people attending. Uh, on the other hand, uh, technical challenges, uh, of course, uh, there is a problem in some platforms. Uh, we already experienced that. Um, uh, competition, I suppose uh, the, the message is um, the vast, the, the large number of uh, events uh, being organized, online events being organized, 
indeed. Especially in spring, each day we had uh, two or three webinars, I suppose everyone did uh, to attend. Uh, participants not being familiar with online tools, uh, indeed, but um, the experience shows that uh, they are getting more familiar as they, they adapt themselves also, but it indeed is a challenge. Personal interaction, well, that's the, the biggest challenge of all, uh, and this is face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and uh, during breaks and uh, longer uh, discussions, indeed. Let's go back to the, the opportunities, more opportunities than challenges, okay. Uh, more, more events in lower cost, okay. Uh, online events attracts participants all over the world, indeed. And uh, to be honest, uh, this was very much highlighted during the BioBridges teaching competitions. Uh, we had also participants from uh, India, China. So, uh, despite uh, the time difference, time zone difference, uh, people attended. Uh, there are people involved who have little time in political decision makers, uh, indeed, uh, especially decision makers, uh, they don't. We have the luxury of dedicating a full day of traveling, so this could be the case. Then line explanation, new, new formats with a safe net. Indeed, uh, it's a time for experimentation and uh, learning process, also from our point. Link people from different countries, indeed, finally have, finally have policy makers, I like the finally. Uh, no human dimension, less trust. Uh, I think this is not in the opportunity, but um, uh, indeed uh, the human interaction it's help, it's it helps uh, many times. Safe traveling time and budget, of course, we need to, under, to see what we can do with this extra time and budget. Uh, the challenges are increasing. Uh, is, it, is it easier for digital natives? Yes, it depends on, uh, I suppose, the, or the type or objective of the uh, event. How to be different? That's a very good point. Uh, and uh, something that, in my opinion, can work, I don't know if um, Robert agrees or anyone else, uh, joining forces, for example, uh, through UBioNet, uh, is one way to do. Uh, yeah, because I also like I also like the when looking at challenges. Um, webinars are boring, and people multitask during webinar, which is uh, leading to uh, lo losing attention. I very much uh, agree with the second part of it. I mean, there are you know exciting webinars, but exciting webinars, boring webinars. But indeed, uh, uh, it is a trend that uh, you know uh, participants are uh, doing uh, two or three other things uh, while attending a webinar. So, so that's a challenge to crack. Uh, but uh, from the presentations before, I remember that uh, one, I don't remember which project, a recommendation to, to combine um, several other tools, interactive tools, for example, like Miro, uh, to give the opportunity to the participants to say something, to interact, and this is a dynamic process. So it's not only us uh, telling you, but also everyone uh, shares his opinion and thoughts. Uh, let's go back to where pajamas. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, okay. I suppose from here you need something good and then Pajamas or shorts? Uh, may, may, may I comment here? Yes, it, re it, it reminds me a bit of uh, my, my school situation. When, when I was a pupil, I only had frontal uh, lessons. Teacher standing in front, probably using the board to write something on, but it was frontal teaching. And the teaching methodologies have changed, and we probably have to do that for the online things as well. So when we go through webinars, when we uh, um, 
attend webinars. It's frontal teaching, and this is boring. Yeah. yeah. So we, <laughs> therefore, we have to change our our teach understanding of teaching or understanding of of uh, reaching out as we did in school. Yeah. So we, we learn for school teaching. So we should be able to learn for online teaching here as well. Maybe we should look into schools what they are doing. In Greece, it's not a good example. So maybe to some other countries. <laughs> uh, the thing is that, yeah, it's uh, I fully agree. And actually, the learning process for us professionals, I mean, being involved in a communication project. Uh, but indeed, it's time to experiment and to, to test additional ways or different ways or more tools or whatever. But in, in, in another end, uh, you see how many people are contributing now in a live event. Uh, when you when you uh, give the microphone around the microphone around in a, in a in a room, you can eventually listen two or three people. Now we are listening 50, 60 people together. So it's better. But, but in in a live event, I would have pe have people with sticky notes, so they were writing on sticky notes as well, and then come to the board and pit in on and, and talk about it. So I, I, that's not much difference here, I think. So you can have this kind of engagement in, in a live event as well. Yeah, but those people should come, and this is probably the main question. For instance, for rural people, how can you bring them in Brussels or in Rome or whatever you want? So probably this is the advantage. Of course, we have to face to a situation. Now, the question is, in the future, which of these tools we will keep and which one we will discard? Now we don't have a solution, but for the future, how we will uh, uh, merge the two live and uh, online uh, events. Uh, let's not just uh, stick to the events, but also, for instance, uh, other type of activities, if it's possible. Yes, but I think, that, Susanna, uh, to just express uh, my, my uh, opinion, uh, when uh, we get back to normal, quote unquote, uh, I think we will be using uh, much more of these interactive online channels also during the physical face-to-face uh, -face meetings. That's my uh, that's my guess. Um, one of the challenges uh, that we faced, uh, me, uh, we meaning uh, bio voices and bio bridges, uh, is uh, to find uh, so much content. Uh, for the social media campaign and for the bioheroes and all for all of these activities. And I'm saying this because uh, earlier we heard about uh, different topic uh, per day for uh, two, three weeks, uh, months, sorry. Uh, this means you really need to collect enough messages. Uh, and uh, this goes beyond events. So this was a uh, personal experience from those projects. Uh, now, let's see anything else. Yeah, the, boards, the boards are too small. I'm trying to <laughs> to put everything. No, what <laughs> is interesting? Them all of them. What is interesting is the fact that in the challenges, uh, in two or three uh, points, is written that uh, for the co-creation you need more time, and uh, typically those events are very quick, like even this one we are running. So, uh, I mean, the consolidation of uh, creative uh, mindset needs time, and this is not really uh, comp compatible with those type of activities. So, what could be the solution? Maybe someone has an idea? <laughs> Finish the test. Hands up. Hands up. Uh, okay, then uh, let me wrap up here and uh, go to the next one. Uh, for now, the, the question, you know, the, um, the thing here, the topic was um, what, uh, in our opinion, uh, is the new situation that we are, face, we are facing in terms of uh, good and bad things, opportunities and challenges. But now let's go uh, to the next question, which has to do with more practical ideas. What worked, in your opinion? What, what, what a good example, or give us a, a tip uh, how to, for events, for uh, publicity campaigns, for interaction, for passing the message, or for convincing 
uh, stakeholders to be involved. Oh, to be co really concrete, so we're we're going uh, one step further from uh, tr you know, translating opportunities uh, to uh, success stories to your stories, and uh, on the other side, uh, you know, translating uh, the challenges into what could be changed or improved. Uh, and we're really looking for uh, tools, messages, uh, channels, formats. I mean, uh, during the presentations, we heard uh, also uh, things that um, were not working, and I, I was really glad to hear that you know this is uh, transparently shared because I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, all of our other projects are facing uh, pretty much similar uh, challenges. So you know that goes uh, to what should be maybe changed or improved. Uh, you know, some lessons learned from the past six months during the COVID uh, pand pandemics. So tell us your story. Tell us your activities or tools. Yeah, we, we shortened to seven minutes here because we needed to run, we are late. Uh, just what I want to say is that those, uh, uh, this board, this link will be active for one week. So you can go back, you can call your colleague, you can do, I mean, you can make a second uh, thinking and come back in the next case, up to next week. And even uh, discuss it internally eh, with your project or with colleagues or with your mother, father, I mean, Whoever, uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe I, I will start picking uh, uh, first uh, post-its uh, from this uh, visual board. Uh, so what worked? Uh, we see, uh, for instance, uh, project meeting quiz. Well, quiz are always fun when they are designed in a playful and, uh, and nice way. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about uh, lengthy surveys, of course, but uh, I, I tend to agree that uh, quiz is a good interactive um, way or tool to uh, collect feedback and uh, get people engaged. Um, furthermore, we have uh, surveys uh, or questions via Mentimeter. Yes, I confirm we are also using in BioVoices um, and BioBridges uh, Mentimeter uh, that uh, nicely also translates the, the feedback into something tangible that can be used also for the deliverables, for the reports, for instance. Uh, and uh, um, also visually speaking, uh, it offers nice uh, graphics and charts um, online consultations to get more feedback. Yes, so online consultations. Maybe who wrote it? I would be. I would like to get um, more elaboration. Like, okay, it, it worked, but it worked because it was online. Uh, uh, I would just like to maybe get more. Whoever uh, posted this, feel free to to intervene. But anyone who's uh, it, it's open mic, open floor. Feel free to share your thoughts. Then we have uh, online meetings to cover up the unfinished works. Okay, that's an interesting one. Sharing positive uh, or light messages. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is this is uh, very interesting also because also us in Bio Voices, uh, what Michaela was uh, expressing, uh, part of our campaigns were really focusing on on very positive and yes, light messages uh, because people are uh, overwhelmed with many issues uh, nowadays, and uh, I think. Uh, Staying positive uh, makes a difference, and absolutely I agree that it, it does work. Streaming events on YouTube, uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and the, 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 I think the simple, uh, single one of the, the biggest advantages is that you can you don't ne have to necessarily stick to the timing of the webinar uh, or the online event. You can watch it whenever you want. You know, before going to bed, or if you wake up early in the morning, or during the lunch break. Uh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, if I don't make it to the webinar, uh, it stays on YouTube, and therefore, you know, it gives me a flexibility in terms of timing. Uh, that's that I certainly agree with. Uh, then we have uh, okay online study visits. This interesting one. Check it uh, out on the Rubismo project. Okay, we will do that. Uh, so it's um, online study visits. We are uh, supposed to do online uh, well study visits in other projects, but we were not thinking about online ones, so we will certainly try to learn more from you. Okay, we're still staying on what is working. I mean, apparently many things are working. Uh, adapting the format of events to type or audience. Yes. Uh, the online setting um, made it possible to get most invited participants to events. Absolutely. We also touched it in uh, in a previous uh, blog. Let me move down to see what are the 
there's uh, maybe also uh, th things that should no sorry things that should be changed will be discussed later so we are still seeing here showing success cases yes and this is what we are also doing uh, during our uh, event today use the real products to show uh, we we were doing this uh, during the you know physical format event but we actually didn't do it or correct me Susanna or uh, Jakobos if I'm wrong during the uh, online webinars now we are we are experimenting this format uh, uh, for the italians it's called the vanna marchi vanna marchi was this seller of uh, i don't know creams cosmetics so we will uh, set up a table and we will make this presentation like uh, this is this is uh, for uh, i don't know building and construction this is uh, so we we will try this if it works or not we will tell mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. I, also, this is very, very, I think, a basic one, but certainly very important one. Explain clearly how to join an event so participants get easily confused. Yes, we are getting uh, crazy with uh, online invitations, links, uh, different access codes, and uh, I, if it's not clearly communicated in one single email, there is a risk that uh, the participation will be lost. I, I agree with that. Um, let them play. Uh, facilitation, for instance, Bioways. Well, we've, we've been part of Bioways project, and I, and I agree. Uh, the gamification element uh, is uh, acting as a big magnet, a successful magnet for attracting uh, audience of all ages, uh, from youngsters to uh, elderly citizens. Mm. Informative cards, videos to explain bioeconomy. Okay, thank you. It's an interesting one. I think this is coming also from uh, Biovoices, I guess, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Robert, just one comment, uh, because we're talking about a uh, playful approach, uh, I would really like to, to know more about the uh, the game from uh, what was it, Bio Echo. Not now, uh, but uh, certainly it would be nice, uh, and everyone, if we could uh, share some more information, maybe a link or something. Uh, to get to know these new tools, these new approaches, huh? because the idea yes. here is to, to duplicate. Yes. If we notice something that works, okay, let's share the, the knowledge uh, and uh, move on and uh, duplicate mm -hmm. it. And I'd like to also pick up one uh, post-it, uh, which is, uh, I think, very important, uh, strategically speaking, and also operationally. Well, EU Bionet uh, as a central promotion platform, I, I, I uh, certainly agree to that because uh, until uh, the, you know, before the EU Bionet was born, I tend to say that a lot of projects were working in uh, isolated uh, or silos uh, uh, worlds, whereas now I, I foresee uh, that in EU Bionet there is at least a very big potential. And uh, since uh, its establishment, I, I must give credit. You, Susanna, did a, and you, with your team, did a great job um, in uh, bringing a bioeconomy uh, to next level. But the time is, time is up for this blog. Um, well, as I said, a lot of uh, interesting comments. Please keep on um, sharing your views. Uh, now we will move to the third blog. Uh, the time is running. Uh, Jakobos, would you like to take over? Yeah, so what worked, but what we should uh, change? What didn't? So avoid it no matter what. Uh, for example, uh, one of the challenges that I can pick from uh, before is uh, the large number of events uh, organized in parallel or in a very short uh, period of time. Of course, we, it's not easy to avoid, but uh, problems. What not to do uh, from uh, your experience? Yes, and I think this will, uh, you know, ideally, uh, I mean, there will be one more um, interactive board where we will try to seek synergies, define next steps, etc. Um, certainly, the, the messages we want to send to to our audience, which is oftentimes uh, very similar, is that we are not we are not working in competition, but in uh, the contrary, we would like to multiply the messages, making them stronger and teaming up uh, whenever it makes sense. Uh, also, in with our events to make a bigger impact the bigger splash uh, across uh, Europe and beyond. Uh, so maybe the timing of events uh, should be maybe better um, or even even better uh, organized, co-organized uh, among our uh, portfolio of bioeconomy projects. 
Uh, and, avoid and, stuffed events. Less is more. Thanks. Nice. Uh, less is more. So in that sense, maybe uh, the European Bioeconomy Network can help uh, because uh, if we use the functionality that is for the partners uh, launch uh, for, for launching collaborations, uh, maybe we can do, if we are doing similar projects, maybe we can join forces and we will reach much more impact as Lyft did, for instance. Uh, I would like to pick also another message, uh, one person speaking a long time. Well, to be honest, this is also terrible for face-to-face uh, -face meetings, physical meetings. Uh, indeed, I fully agree. It, uh, it makes the old, uh, it's a gift to uh, be able to speak for a long time and keep the audience alive. Uh, I don't think, I don't have that gift anyway. So uh, for me, I prefer to keep it uh, shorter. And uh, another point somewhere, uh, giving the, uh, and good speakers, obviously, <laughs> uh, to give the, um, the floor to the audience also, to keep it active. Jacobus, I have to say that uh, I'm starting to see that uh, the participants are starting to use creatively other tools. They're picking them up from the, from <laughs> the tools on the left, so they're making connections and... Uh, you know, I didn't explain all the tools that we have uh, in, in the mirror, but uh, just not to, you know, screw up too much on uh, on how to work uh, on uh, on the boards. But uh, I'm seeing that uh, you're starting to. <laughs> yeah, that's good. In, in in light of what you're saying now, Luis, also uh, yeah. and uh, the previous uh, uh, comment, uh, like uh, organizers are getting more experience. I mean, this is uh, very much evolving, new, new evolving, not emerging, uh, but fastly growing industry so um, indeed all the uh, like things behind the scenes are uh, now uh, improving as we speak and there are new capacities new skills uh, being uh, acquainted thanks to these online webinars so I'm, I'm convinced that uh, you know even in a couple months from now uh, these uh, online formats will be you know always uh, higher and higher quality uh, going beyond events, is there any other bad example we should avoid, any other bad experience that we should avoid? It is not about uh, only bad experience, but also about suggestion for improvement at uh, this, uh, this part, uh, yeah. this session. Uh, in this way, to uh, something that uh, we tried it, we tested it, uh, it was not perfect, but for the next time we would like to do it like this. I'm asking myself, but also you, Jakob, and everyone here, you know, what can be done uh, to avoid uh, that our participants are multitasking? <laughs> uh, no, how to, how to change it? To avoid that they check email, for instance. Yeah, I mean, uh, check the emails and, uh, uh, you know, uh, cooking and uh, doing other things as well. Uh, there was um, an app uh, idea to be de developed in a product that um, uses artificial intelligence to, to see who is not participating or not from the face expression. But that's not here yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be honest, there isn't any way to... The video, keeping the video on is, helps, uh, but then you have bandwidth problems. Uh, you can, uh, anyway, uh, respond to emails. Mm -hmm. But going to the, to the old world, uh, say before February or so uh, this year, you know, when we were all sitting in a, you know, physically sitting in a meeting room, uh, you know, it randomly happened that some of us checked uh, mobile or open laptop or so, you know, because you didn't feel comfortable. You, it was immediately uh, seen that you're not paying 100% attention. But here, uh, this, um, this uh, um, wall is broken. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the, the challenges that you, you have a lot of participants, but, you know, how attentive they are, how involved they are. Uh, I think in, on the bottom of the, the poster there is the answer. <laughs> Indeed, uh, switch on cameras and do small breaks out, breakout groups to be interactive. I mean, uh, let them be active or ask them to, to contribute. Asking yeah. means that you have to wake up and uh, do whatever you are asked to do. 
contribute to the I discussion. Think, I think what we have on the screen right now is an example of that. So uh, people is interacting. Uh, yeah. We have a, a poster with a lot of contribution. So I think the, what should be changed is this, is this webinars where it's only someone speaking for uh, one hour and, and then goodbye and that's it. So that we need to have interaction as it was in a, in a physical event. So even the alternating, for instance, uh, like today we did one hour of presentation and one, and one hour of interactive and probably this is wrong, it's better to kind of alternate. But then you have the risk that the people are keeping staying here and playing with the with the tools, with the bottles, with the smiles. <laughs> it's not easy, eh? I don't know if this uh, watch is related to beware of online breakout sessions. I don't know. If for, it's for us, at some point, it worked out very well when we uh, made meetings in a smaller groups. We could make a one workshop for 11 countries but we made separate workshops for each country. Very often we arrange those meetings in national languages, uh, or we have somebody to translate it for those uh, who are weaker in English. Um, it was quite successful and we very much engage those people. So those meetings are arranged for, let's say, up to 10 people, so we have direct contact through the whole hour with most of participants. They really know for what reason they are at the meeting, what we have to do, what results we want to achieve during uh, the workshop, and they are fully engaged in the workshop. So smaller meetings with dedicated uh, people uh, for the job. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this contribution. So make it more personal and more uh let's say, direct with a small group of people. Okay, we can go to the next. Jacobus, Robert? Uh, yes, uh, yes this, this one is the, the last one. Jacobus, would you like to introduce it? Okay, uh, how can um, we, the, the network, uh, can contribute to increasing your uh, the impact of each project? Because so far, uh, each project has its own agenda, its own objective, its own uh, activities. It was uh, easier. There was a kind of uh, conflict, let's say, between events and activities before. But uh, now I think it's more pressing to, to collaborate or to exploit other resources. I mean, what's your opinion? How the, the network can be of use? What should be the number one priority of the network? Maybe Susanna, I want to uh, remind you know, two, three points. Uh, what is IU Bionet already doing? Uh, because you know there is a lot of stuff that is being done. Uh, sure. And uh, you know, think of also something new. Yes. First of all, you know uh, that we have uh, this website, and one of the most uh, successful uh, places is uh, the page where everybody can publish his own uh, news and events. And I have to say that some people even from the Commission are starting to say, oh, I use it as a reference point to understand what is going on in the bioeconomy. So this is a good result. But what is absolutely important is that in the context of transition to bio, the EU Bionet has been recognized as an important player. Therefore, we have some budget, and this budget means that we can even improve our website, we can organize events uh, like uh, today event. So we, we finally have uh, uh, let's say um, budget in terms of uh, also of work. Of course, you can always use us uh, as a main, the main contact you you can find if you would like uh, to have a, a collaboration. So we can spread among the partner. You can spread your own collaboration uh, demand uh, request uh, to everybody, or even you can ask us because of course we are more aware of uh, what are the projects that are maybe more suitable to collaborate with you. And I recommend to, to exploit the EU Bionet mm -hmm. more. Uh, especially for the, the projects which are uh, which have been not which haven't been on the map for, for a long time. 
and they still haven't built up uh, the necessary networks maybe or, or channels, uh, etc. I would uh, really much uh, uh, recommend uh, you know, to see and uh, to EO Bionet, which is positioning uh, itself as a hub, um, you know, to, to reach out to them. And, uh, you know, we are, we, because if you don't know someone, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that EO Bionet knows them or can um, you know, introduce you to, to, to the needed uh, person. So it's, uh, it's really, uh, you know, friend next door, uh, and uh, it should be uh, seen that way. Uh, instead of, uh, you know, going through, uh, you know, cold call contacting people, maybe it uh, makes more sense with a much uh, bigger chance of success uh, going uh, through EOBionet and be introduced through EOBionet. Um, that's, I think, a big advantage of, uh, of uh, this mm -hmm. network. And also, I like the idea of working in small thematic groups because, of course, the projects are, are different and therefore we can, maybe we can send a kind of survey in which you can express what are your main areas of uh, action and interest. So we can create small groups and organize more often some uh, webinars so we don't have to travel, we don't have to spend the budget that we don't have in our, allocated in our project, but maybe um, one, uh, every two or three months, maybe if three months is better, so four times a year, for instance, small groups, uh, thematic groups. Uh, I think uh, the one, let's say, common idea is um, create an internal platform to exchange ideas, talk, I mean, uh, like an, int an intranet, like an internal uh, page where we uh, share information, and this is also to several other posts, uh, including the organization of uh, similar events like this one, uh, every, let's say, three or six months or periodically, uh, which uh, can be even thematically or oriented to a project with a similar objective. Uh, so yeah, so look at this one. Uh, look at uh, certainly yes, uh, and I, what I, I'm just reading one one comment which is uh, very interesting. Position paper integrating opinions from different projects. Uh, maybe this could be you know, uh, some sort of uh, pro, like uh, activity or initiative, uh, helping us to understand what the projects really want, and then uh, try to cluster them into different thematic groups smaller groups, Susanna, Susanna Yeah, consider said. that this was, uh, was done basically by LIFT. Uh, for instance, mm -hmm. the, the outcomes of uh, uh, the, the, the workshops, the uh, 30, 38, if I'm not wrong, project that participated, and the majority of those projects were from the U Bayonet in the, the BBIJU Stakeholder Forum. All these recommendations have been consolidated in the LIFT fact sheets, and in some even, let's say, uh, not public confidential uh, guidelines that has be, have been sent, even to be taken into consideration for the future calls. And I have to say that I've seen some calls that changed mm -hmm. following kind of, I, I cannot say following, but the wording were similar of what we suggested. Uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, all the ideas that are um, uh, put here, are reflected here, uh, will be used for um, a final document, a kind of a position paper. And this answer to your comment, Robert. Uh, what is the situation? What are good practices? What things to, to change? So the outcome of this event will be documented in a short um, a conclusion document. Uh, I see uh, include the food sector too. Yes, uh, transition to bio is about bioeconomy. While, uh, uh, I mean, the, fir the, the previous, the former supporter of the European Bioeconomy Network was uh, uh, bio waste that was about bio based products. So, therefore, uh, the focus will be much more open and the food sector will be one of the, let's say, uh, new uh, invitations that we will submit uh, for, for new partners. And uh, finally, just to, to give the pass to the next, let's say, discussion, keep a joint list of planned project events. And this is exactly uh, our next and uh, final topic of discussion. Uh, not only what, uh, what we would like from uh, EU Bionet, uh, how to exploit it, but in practice. So, Louis, if you can open. 
while opening a license in itself into an association. Some could put it out. Yes. Very good. It needs some thinking and the work, but it's a good idea indeed. So yes. uh, the point here, maybe not. Uh, we, we don't have the time today. Certainly within uh, the next, let's say, five working days until next Wednesday. The idea is here to to understand what um, each project is planning for the next six months. In terms, it can be an event, it can be a development of a tool, of a game, a campaign, uh, whatever, an activity that um, should be shared. Uh, so please give uh, the, the acronym of the project and short title of uh, the type of activity. Uh, but not only, not only even, I mean, because we are really heavily focusing on events, but there are also like really deliverables. You know, when, when is your interesting report with the content coming up? We would like to see because it can feed to other uh, other deliverables of other projects. Uh, these are certainly uh, information that we would uh, find beneficial. Uh, please, uh, uh, please try to to make them uh, small to fit in the in the right month because otherwise we don't understand. Like Rubismo, it's uh, it's taking four months. I don't know if it's the case. <laughs> That's the marketing so, of Rubismo. I mean, they're visible. <laughs> just just to make it so that we know where in which column they are. And please also add what type of collaboration you look for. For instance, in BioVoice, as we are developing a book for kids, so what we are looking for is uh, stories and experts. So if you can write this or, for instance, what has been done by, by the last uh, three projects. Yes, we all know that uh, you know while the public uh, deliverables get uh, are really public, you know there is a certain uh, like significant period of time uh, that needs to pass. So uh, a lot of material is already um, let's say available, not formally, but uh, this is exactly you know why why we should share information what is already uh, you know at disposal and what could be used as um, uh, food for further events uh, or reports or activities. Uh, uh, so Rubitmo is a few months. It's four it's, months. It's for four months. Or is in April? Because I see an hour also. Okay. So part for bio ends uh, in March 2021. Uh, means that there will be some uh, final event, I presume, or uh, or not, or some uh, recommendations, perhaps that uh, certainly can uh, um, act as a good uh, input to other work. Well, and, um, yeah? yeah, regarding Powerful Bio, we uh, plan to have a Bioeconomy Innovation Week in January, but um, yeah, we of course cannot do that, and uh, so we are still discussing how to do that, and it probably will also be a series of events, uh, but um, yeah, we, we haven't decided on that yet, how we will have that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, our um, idea is to have this kind of uh, knowledge exchange every six months. Obviously, uh, it's not easy from now to, to plan something next uh, September, not only because of the situation, but it's too far away. So within the next uh, month, even if there is no specific uh, date yet for the event or for the, the tool to be released or whatever, it would be good, useful for everyone to know, just to contribute, to test, to use, whatever. Yeah, I, I'm, we were discussing yesterday that maybe we can do a kind of tool like that uh, within the platform, so it's real time and everybody can go there of course, only the partners, um, and, and launch some uh, inputs for collaboration. What I would like to stress, uh, and uh, this was uh, something that was uh, kind of uh, lacking in the first two years of the European Bioeconomy Network, is that when you are preparing something, you prepare it a few months in advance. So if you are looking for collaboration, do it well in advance. And, and consider that this collaboration might increase the impact and the success of your event. Always remember this. And if you ne need help, assistance, come back to us. I mean, we are 
very happy to help. Mm -hmm. I see a few projects ending, uh, and uh, this means uh, really that uh, there is a legacy, potential legacy that could be picked up by, by, the, by other projects. So I would uh, certainly um, emphasize. I would, I would like to emphasize this um, because every time something ends, something new begins. And also consider that in transition to bio, we will have uh, this library of uh, results that basically is uh, the son of the LIFT uh, Bioeconomy Library, in which we would like to collect all uh, your information from your project, so the results, uh, uh, something that can be exploited by someone else, uh, and this is absolutely very useful. For instance, the games that have been developed by uh, BioWays so a few years ago are still used very actively in the schools, as an example. But for doing this, you need to make them available. Uh, again, I would like again to encourage all of you to not, uh, uh, I mean, to, to keep on working on this document, also engaging the other partners of your project, because they might have something to say. Absolutely. I mean, if uh, we can ask you for additional, let's say, 10 minutes of your time, even after this um, this uh, event, and it could be, uh, you know, any time during this week, uh, please uh, focus on the very last intervention, because this is something that we can certainly um, uh, continue or, and uh, pick up on. Uh, for some reason, April and May are empty. Is it because of the Easter vacation? I don't know, people, because it's, uh, well, December, January are full, obviously, because it's a couple of months before they start to plan, but then um, nothing in April and May. Maybe it's not yet uh, decided or, uh, you know, confirmed. It has to do also with the fact that uh, online meetings, uh, although they request a lot of work, much more work than live event, at least this is my experience, you don't prepare them very, very, very far in time. So we're not working for the April stuff. Actually, no. my, my point yes. here is that uh, this is another uh, piece of information we can extract from this table. But um, organizing something in January uh, is full of events. And some of the comments, uh, before, uh, uh, well, exactly that. Uh, but April, May, if it's convenient, it's an empty month. So this kind of uh, knowledge can help us adjust. This is a very good point. And also consider that this action plan that we are doing here is exactly what was stated in as a mission for the European Bioeconomy Network by the European Bioeconomy Strategy. So basically we are fulfilling what is requested for us, but we are trying to maximize the impact of this activity. The last uh, block that appears now is a block in which uh, we would like uh, the participants, so not only the, the project or even the project, including the ones that are not part of the European Bioeconomy Network because we have some external projects, to put here uh, what you do and what type of collaboration you are looking for uh, by the EU Bionet uh, members. Uh, I remind again for those who are not part of the European Bioeconomy Network, but not only you, but if you are aware of uh, uh, some uh, project that might be interesting for, for the European and might enrich the uh, European Bioeconomy Network portfolio. I, mean, I want to stress that the European Bioeconomy Network is not our stuff, is our in a wider sense stuff. Belongs to everybody that is here and is not here. So. This is my message. Anyway, we are we start to be out of our time, uh, although I see a lot of uh, collaboration. So maybe uh, we can uh, get to the conclusion, uh, Jakovos, Robert. Uh, just uh, save this uh, in your bookmark, this page. To, in order to have access uh, to it uh, in the next weeks. Uh, share the knowledge, maybe this is also a good exercise uh, for internal discussion within your consortium. Uh, just to, it's an idea how to, to proceed in terms of uh, what worked, what didn't work. It's a duplicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
Okay, it was it was duplicated. I don't know what happened. Some some technical. Be prepared. Uh, what was the the? Be prepared to to technical issues. Uh, and um, from our side, from the organizer side, uh, we will share all this uh, information. Um, next week, uh, this will be fixed. So, but still, you will have access to it. But fixed. Uh, and uh, the presentations. I don't know if uh, Susanna we will send them by email. Yes, or we will. Uh, we will send. Yeah, I will send a presentation with all the the presentations, so a PDF with all the presentations uh, um, today or tomorrow, together with uh, this link, so you can uh, use it and and a kind of extraction, uh, a snapshot of uh, what is uh, the situation of the Miro now, just to save it in case uh, something happened. So we, you will receive this email. Feel free to share this email with your colleagues because, again, we are here to increase the impact of our project. So much we act as multiplier, better we do. So uh, yes, so please consider, consider the last uh, blackboard. Uh, I still see some contributions as uh, something like also a wish list, you know, from uh, your end to EO Bionet members and uh, also the, the EO Bionet uh, uh, leaders to uh, you know, express uh, what uh, type of service or collaboration you would be interested in. Great. So I would like uh, to thank uh, everybody, the speakers uh, for their inspiring stories, the participants for their super active uh, uh, participation, um, everybody. So. Keep on uh, following the European Bioeconomy Network, send us your suggestions, uh, and be part more actively of uh, this family. So bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Uh, we also have to find a way to close this, uh, a new innovative way to close this session. Uh, if we can uh, switch on the videos for a yes. family yes. photo. For a picture, so Luis, uh, Christine, so switch on the videos and... so we, we, we see the faces, at least of the... Um, I'm having issues with mine. Ah, now it's working. Okay. Okay, we see you, Anne. Okay, so everybody, thanks a lot again, uh, and uh, see you hopefully very soon uh, all together. Perfect. The European Bioeconomy Network will offer a drink to everybody. This is a spoiler. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.